All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm excited. Y'all let me back up here again. So, <laughs> uh, so my name is uh, Aaron Franklin, if you do not know me. And then my wife, Taylor, is here at the front. <laughs> All right. So today with my uh, lesson, what I really want to do is just induce thought, just uh, get us to think. That's one of my favorite things to do is to think and to think critically. What I try to teach my uh, students all the time is to just comprehend and understand what you're doing, but just use your mind to think. And so that's what I want us to do is to think. I'm not here to sway your beliefs in anything, but I am here to possibly challenge you uh, in your views. All right. So first, what I want to talk about, just a little personal story where uh, what God has been doing in my life probably the last two or three months. So uh, for some reason, I do not know why, but I was just thinking about death a whole lot. I, I do not know why I was thinking about death. But surely I'm not the only one who thinks about death. Uh, <laughs> uh, but what, and, uh, and I was thinking, I was like, God, are you trying to like warn me or something? You trying to take me out? I'm like, I'm not ready to go quite yet. <laughs> Don't do me like you did, Moses. Like, I haven't made it to the promised land yet. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still trying to be here. But what God told me within that moment was that I wasn't dying to myself daily. There was parts of my life where I needed to continue to die, specifically uh, wanting to cause a ruckus, right? Uh, being afraid to step on people's toes because of what they may think. Um, and what God was showing me was that I was too much worried about my self-image, Right? And what God was saying is that I could care less about your self-image. All I want you to do is to speak truth and to be bold and to proclaim my uh, gospel. And who cares if you're wrong, right? If you're wrong, repent, keep moving, keep learning, right? And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to be bold, and I'm going to try to uh, bring, God, bring God's word. So today my lesson is called Rebel. All right? Rebel. And so these, these are the objectives. So you can tell I'm a teacher, right? We got to. <laughs> I have to make sure that they understand what's going on. All right. So we're going to look at, uh, at some that have rebelled against systems and why. And then we're going to question our dependence on it and then ask ourselves uh, questions to critically think. All right. So uh, before I go, I got to talk about what systems are. And so in this lesson, when I say the world system, I'm talking about Satan's kingdom. If I'm talking about the physical world system, I'm talking about us, our economic system here on earth. And obviously, if I'm talking about the kingdom of God, I'm talking about his system. All right. So there are two major systems and only two, only two. There is the kingdom of uh, Satan that's headed by Satan and his uh, demonic spirits. And then there is the kingdom of God, which is headed by uh, Jesus Christ. Now, what we have to understand is that everything that happens here in this physical earth is impacted in the spiritual. Right? Everything that goes on is, is because of what is going on in the spiritual realms. And if you want to know, uh, know a little bit more about that, read Daniel and when he was praying to God for 21 days. And it took the angel of God uh, a while to come to help him because he was being... Um, held off by Satan's uh, spiritual or demonic spirits or demons, right? So the world system or Satan's kingdom defined, all right, and I'm not talking about our economic world system, our physical world system. I'm talking about Satan's kingdom right now. All right, the world system is an interlocking set of structures influenced by evil spirits and is ultimately headed by Satan. Its chief purposes are deceiving human beings separating them from God and destroying them, okay? The world system is diametrically opposed to its spiritual counterpart, the kingdom of God. So these are the only two major systems that influences our physical world, all right? The purpose of the kingdom of God is reconciling people with God and expanding God's reach in the world. The world system is, or the kingdom, uh, kingdom of Satan, is built to oppose God's purposes, the satanic insurrection or uh, world system affects every area of life and learning, including, all right, now, so I want you to think about these areas of life. All right, entertainment, that one is not too hard to look at. All right, you can look at the latest music video or the latest song, and you can tell that it's probably influenced uh, by Satan. I see it, I see it personally. 
uh, with kids that listen to this music and you can just see the, the change in their composure and how it affects them and, and how it uh, brings anger within uh, anger out of them and just acting out and not acting like, uh, you know, how God kingdom, God's kingdom will want us to. Government. Now, this is a big one. Satan definitely influences government, government policies, government choices, government leaders, right? Um, that's, that's a whole nother sermon. I won't, I won't get into that one. <laughs> that's a whole nother sermon. <laughs> All right, then schools. Now, I'm a teacher. We have a whole lot of teachers in here, so you all know that Satan is without a doubt within our school system. It's got kind of clear as day. You can see it. All right, uh, philosophy or the study of knowledge. You have literature. You have business, medicine, religion. We can all tell how divided we are within Christianity. Uh, science. Now, this is one that some people feel that science is their religion, right? Science, if anything has science back to it, it's fact, right? Can't be denied, but are you putting science above God? Uh, games, ethics, media, arts, okay, and more. All right, so if you do not believe me about how Satan's system and his evil spirits are designed to influence our physical world, Ephesians 6, 12 through 13 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authority, against the powers of this dark world, uh, world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. All right. So um, if you want to check out that more, that's also a whole nother sermon, which is studying the kingdom of Satan is actually pretty interesting if you, if you want to study that. Um, so going on. So we can see that. The kingdom of Satan is designed to influence our physical world and that once darkness takes over our physical world, it can make us feel safe, right? It can make us feel comfortable. And inherently, all of those things is not bad. It's, it's okay to be safe, be comfortable, right, with a balance. But what if, what if we've been deceived and have been relying on Satan as our king, Right? What if we've been lulled to sleep by depending on the physical world system? What if our dependence has been on Satan and his kingdom? <laughs> All right, but um, we've talked about systems long enough, so what I want to talk about now is rebellion, us rebelling against this system. So here are the reasons you rebel. All right, you rebel. Rebellion, uprising, or insurrection is a refusal of obedience or order. A rebellion originates from a sentiment of indignation and disapproval of a situation and then manifests itself by the refusal to submit or to obey to the authority responsible for this situation. All right, so I work at Northwest Classroom, which isn't too far from here, and we have uh, kids from Guatemala who, in, who come to our schools all the time. And uh, there was a coworker tell me about this uh, one kid that just came. It took them, took her 25 days to get here because of what's going on in Guatemala, within their government, within um, their system. And one would have to think that there's no reason why they want to come over here. Why would you stay in that situation? All right, why would you stay in this situation? But I do want to come back uh, to that because why would it, even why would we even wait till it would till it gets to that situation, right? Why do we wait till things get so out of hand and and in chaos? All right. So now I want to look at a few people from my history uh, that rebelled. Okay, we got Harriet Tubman, we got Rosa Parks, and we have uh, MLK. So these are the three I want to talk about really quick. Now, what these what these three did, um, they didn't just sit back and let the system at its time decide if they would speak up or speak out. They didn't let the system silence them. All right? They stood up against what was going on, the oppression that was going on, and they knew they counted the cost that their lives would probably be on the line. All right? But yet and still, they did. All right? Martin Luther King, MLK, being a black man, he, he absolutely had to know that he was going to get killed. He had to know. The things that he was speaking uh, and the things that he was saying, there was no doubt that he was going to get killed eventually. But I believe that was a, a cost that he counted. And 
uh, with MLK doing that, that's, that's exactly what God wants to do. He was trying to bring black people and white people together. The system doesn't want that to happen because if that happens, then we come together and we are one step closer to depending on the kingdom of God. Right? But when we rebel against the system, Right, and we come together and we decide that we, we don't wanna we don't wanna go by what the, the influences of Satan and what he's doing. We want to depend on God, then we have an Egypt moment. Right? We have a moment where God was just waiting for them to finally realize that this system is not meant for you. My system is meant for you, my kingdom is meant for you, my government is meant for you. Come out of Egypt. Don't worry about depending on Egypt, just depend on me. All right, and when we do that, God can rise up and do amazing things, and it's, that is what he wants. And it's no reason why Paul was saying, be united uh, before you devour each other. Because we're, if we're not united, if we don't come together, then God can't powerfully move in our lives like he wants us to move. All right, so... So right now, what I want to do is I want to address my black brothers and sisters, because we have, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful, because black is beautiful, right? Black is strong. Black is history. But we have to be very careful, careful that we, one, we don't make black an idol, and we don't put black culture over kingdom, which we can easily do. And two, we cannot allow hatred in our hearts to resonate towards our white brothers and sisters. Personal story, my, I had uh, three grandmothers. Uh, one was born in 1923, I believe. The other two were born in the 50s. And to be just open and honest, they could not stand white people. It took them their whole lives to finally get rid of that hatred that was in their hearts. And they would tell me stories about what happened to them and things that, that, uh, that happened within that, their societies. All right, and it, just for them to even open up about that uh, showed the growth that they were trying to have, but it was still so very hard. Like, they couldn't even watch some of those movies that they would come out, like 12 Years a Slave, and none of it, they couldn't. It was just too much for them because it brought back too much pain and emotion. And so what I want us to be careful is that we don't allow that hatred and resentment in our hearts to allow us to be divided against our white brothers and our white, brothers and our white sisters because... White people are beautiful, right? White people are strong, right? White people are courageous, and if we come together, God's kingdom moves more powerfully than Satan's kingdom can ever do, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's, right now, let's turn it biblically. Let's look at some people in the, in the Bible, not people, Daniel, who rebelled against uh, the system, Okay? So in Daniel 1, 6 through 12, we have uh, here Daniel, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal, royal food and wine. He asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now, God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel, but the official told Daniel, I'm afraid of my Lord, the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other man your age? The king then would have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and uh, Azariah, please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. All right. And then uh, the next one, we have Daniel 3, 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. All right, so we look in this, the scripture right here. Daniel set himself up in opposition against the kingdom that was in the world at that time, all right, uh, Babylon. He refused to even eat the food 
uh, to defile himself because he to totally wanted to p depend on God and his kingdom. You can even look at Jesus. Now it makes way more sense to me why Jesus told them to go out with no food, no clothes, no, no, no nothing, right? He wanted them to totally depend on God and to totally depend on his system because there is deceit when you get comfortable and you want to depend on this physical world system for your pleasures, for your entertainment, for your safety, for your job, for the money that you get. All those things are good, but like I said earlier, what if those systems are influenced by the kingdom of Satan and we have no idea, right? All right. And then right here, they were willing to even be thrown into the, to the uh, blazing furnace before they would bow down to worship Nebuchadnezzar. Now, <laughs> how many of us are willing to put God's kingdom above this physical world system to totally be separate from it all right, and to totally worship God without that fear? Because as we see, when you rebel against Satan's kingdom and the influences that he tries to put here on earth, there's going to be danger. All right? You will be attacked. You will be persecuted. Your life could possibly even be in danger. Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, right? The things that they did, it, it wasn't, we, we can't just brush over it. They were putting their lives uh, at stake. That's not something that we can brush over. But as Christians, which I'm going to, I want to get to this point here in a bit. As Christians, are we willing to put our lives at stake to rebel against the kingdom of Satan? Can you even really distinguish us from Satan's kingdom and from the kingdom of God? It's, it's pretty tough to see, right? All right, so what I want to talk about right now is when you refuse to rebel, okay? When you refuse to rebel, all right? Now, as we said, as we said earlier, the refusal to rebel, or when you, when you rebel, there will be danger, but are you going to rely on safety and comfort, or are you going to rely on God? And when you refuse to rebel, you allow these things within the world system and Satan's influences to keep impacting them, okay? So as a church, we can't keep sitting back. And this is probably the most important thing I really want to talk about today. As a church, we can't keep sitting back and looking at the things in the world as if it's nothing. Like, we have to pay attention to what's going on. Everything in the Bible was about political things, political uprisings, Right? But I'm afraid that we're just sitting back because we don't want to get our, our hands wet. We don't want to get our feet dirty. We're afraid to speak up with what's going on. Okay? We can't just keep playing church, just coming to church every day. I mean, talking about Jesus is amazing. But when are we going to talk about and address the things that are going to impact us in this world? Because we all know the end of things, there's going to be the Antichrist coming up to try to set himself up as Jesus. So we have to understand that Satan is trying to influence us. He's trying to deceive us. Okay? So are we going to just keep sitting here every day like nothing is going on when we see the world in chaos every single day? We're supposed to be the salt and supposed to be the light. All right? We're supposed to impact, rebel against Satan's kingdom. Anytime we see the influence of Satan's kingdom in any area of life, whether it's schools, whether it's entertainment, whether it's the government, as kingdom citizens, we're supposed to stand up, rebel against it, take back land, take back territory, take back uh, it all for the kingdom of God to allow his influences to reach throughout the whole entire earth, which was God's original plan with Adam and Eve, but we messed up, right? His whole purpose was to spread the kingdom and to, was to spread peace, his peace, throughout the whole entire world, all right? So now to critically think, to just to ask yourself questions, to, right, to challenge you a little bit. Because when we keep saying yes and yes to what the government in this world, this physical world system gives us, and we don't say no, we don't deny ourselves, we don't deny our flesh, how can we even determine what is from God and what is from Satan? When we make decisions, have we really set to think about the impact from the spiritual world and how it's influencing the physical world? Because Daniel didn't even accept food and water, right? So are we thinking about these things? Mandates. Have we thought about is that from God or is that influenced by Satan? Putting us against each other with division between being vaccinated and not vaccinated, arguing with each other and being down each other's throats. Is that influence from God or is that influence from Satan? 
Because God is not a God of confusion. God is not a God of disorder. So you really have to think and, and ask yourself this. Right? The people, the young men and women who are getting gunned down in the streets of Chicago, even here in Oklahoma City, you see young men and women getting gunned down. Is all this violence and hatred and anger influenced from the kingdom of God or is it influenced from the kingdom, kingdom of Satan? And if it's influenced from the kingdom of Satan, then, well, as a church, we have not done our job. We have not been ambassadors of Christ to go out into this land, to take back land, to make it look a little bit more like the Garden of Eden. That's our whole purpose here, is to be Christ's ambassadors, to come and subjugate this earth for God. It's within the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're supposed to make earth look like heaven. Okay? When we see... Uh, immigration at the borders and all these things are we devouring each other of division and, and going against each other because of our views and our perspectives or are we trying to make it look like the kingdom of God because everybody's going to have different perspectives everybody's going to have different views but what brings our perspectives and our views together Jesus you go back to Jesus right be careful that you're not devoured so you don't divide each other so you so you don't devour each other okay satan is like a, a walking lion looking to deceive us and to devour us to put us against each other my goal is to bring everybody together because the enemy is not each other the enemy is not even people who who don't believe in god <laughs> the enemy is satan and his spirits that he puts above the different areas here on earth okay so we really have to really sit and ask each other these questions. Because the world is looking for somebody to step up and stand out for this. And if we're not doing it, well, everybody else is going to figure out a way to do it and come up with their own plans. But any movement that has, hasn't had God in it has what? Has failed. If God is not in the movement, it's not going to, it's not going to work. It's not going to last. So what are we doing as a church? This is the only reason why God has us here. And I don't want to keep repeating myself, but I'm just kind of tired of, of sitting back, just coming to church and just, just doing the thing we do. <laughs> All right, when we have so much stuff going on. All right. Um, and last night was, we was out uh, at Taylor H's birthday dinner. And the conversation got brought up, and I was like, this I know God is wanting me to talk about this because we were talking about, because I was going to use an example of like the frog man in the boiling water and just warming us up until next thing we know, things of, we're dead, right? We haven't even done anything. We're dead. We can't even, we can't even fight back, all right? And so we had a conversation, had a conversation with a couple of brothers and we were talking about TikTok and trying to create TikTok to come in here and infiltrate, same thing as what Satan tries to do, infiltrate our world by dumbing us down to make a weaker America. And I thought that was very interesting uh, as, a, as a new way of warfare. I, I hadn't even never thought about it in that perspective. But that is my fear that we are being dumbed down as Christians, not able to make an impact in this earth, let alone, a, let alone our city. Like, just here in Oklahoma City, that's a start. <laughs> that's a start. But I think God wants more than that. God is, like I said earlier, God is looking for people who are willing to rebel against what Satan is trying to do in his world systems and depend solely on him and his kingdom. Solely on him and his kingdom. All right, so I want to leave us with just a few, with a few uh, scriptures. All right, Matthew 24 says, for false messiahs, and this is not in the, the perfect context, I'm just, I just want to get my point about deception. All right, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great sign and, and signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. All right, the elect is Christians. This is Jesus saying that we will be deceived. So every day, anybody can be deceived. Every day we have to ask ourselves, okay, Am I just accepting this and, and going along with this? Or am I really seeing if this is from the influence of the kingdom of Satan and his world system? 
and of God or of God. And if it's not, I need to rebel against Satan's system. I need to come and depend solely on God. And then uh, in 2 Timothy, it says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving, so they're trying to deceive us, and being deceived. And I ask myself this question, I wonder, it says being deceived, who are they being deceived by? And my only thing I can think of is Satan and his plans that he has for the world. Okay? And so... To ask yourself, I mean this daily, am I being deceived? Am I going along with the flow? Am I wanting to cause a ruckus? Am I wanting to, to stand up and to speak out against what I see? Okay? If I see injustices, am I going to just downplay what somebody else is experience, experiencing? Or am I going to try to, am I going to try to figure out, figure out a way to bring God's kingdom into the situation, to take back more land for God, okay? Am I going to stand up and stand up, stand out here in the, this physical world system that we're living in? How can I be different? How can I look more like God, all right? So just wrapping up, um, just looking back at what the, what the world system is and what it's designed to do, all right? It's designed to, uh, Satan's system is designed to infiltrate this physical world system to have us to depend on it. Just look at people who rebelled against the systems and the reasons why you do rebel. Right? You rebel because just oppression, right? You rebel because the system isn't working for you anymore. Okay? And then look at people like Harriet, like Rosa, like Martin, who counted the costs, who knew that I'm probably going to lose my life, but my life is worth losing for the better good of humanity. If I can make this world look just a little bit more like God, I've done my part in his miraculous plan that he has for earth. Right? Look at Daniel, who turned, away from, who turned away food so he wouldn't defile himself so that he wouldn't look like uh, Babylon at the time, so he could be separate, right? was willing to go into the fire, then bow down against the false idol and the false image. Right? And then asking ourselves these questions. Right? Am I just sitting back, being lulled to sleep, playing church, or am I out really trying to do something, really trying to get my uh, perspective, my viewpoint into this world to make it look like God's? Am I standing up? Am I using my gifts and my talents for God and his kingdom? All right, and then just these two scriptures right here, just something to self-reflect on throughout the week and all the time, right? Am I being deceived? Am I going with the flow? Am I wanting to stand up and make an impact? All right, so I'm going to close.